Thank you for joining us on Encounters today. I'm blessed with me today to have Sister Favor Caddy once again. And we're going to be studying today on making decisions. And important decisions are like seeds, but we don't know what, Sister Favor, what they're going to be like until we see the fruit. So it's up to us uh, what we do to nurture and, and see that the, the seed that's planted um, brings forth into fruition something good. Amen. Amen. I'm looking forward to this study in particular because everyone out there all time, all times a day at one point or another has to make a decision about something. Whether you're opening the refrigerator and deciding whether to have what to have for lunch or, right. or dinner or whatever. Supper. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we all have to make decisions on something. But today we're going to be talking about making uh, there's good decisions and there's bad decisions. But today, uh, Sister Faye is going to start off on the study today, and I'm going to let her uh, begin with it. And we're just going to, we encourage you to open your word up if you've got it, or come back later and watch it and, uh, and just join us. Amen. Sister Faye. Sister Deborah, thank you for asking me and making decisions. That's all a part of life. Yes. I mean, we cannot go through life without making some sort of decision mm -hmm. from the time we're old enough to know, uh, you know, we go to school, we got to make a decision mm -hmm. to get up, catch that school bus right. and different things. And I always like to look up a definition. So I looked up the word decisions out of Webster and it says decision, the act of making up one's mind, determination, firmness of mind, to be or remain steadfast in your conviction. And I thought about when we are steadfast and we are making a decision, yes. we've sought God, mm -hmm. and then we know how the devil will come against us to try to get us to go in a different That's direction. Right. That's right. Try to break that steadfast determination mm -hmm. in that decision that we've made. And uh, like in school, as I said, uh, I'm going to study hard because I got this test coming up mm -hmm. and I am going to pass that test. I need that grade. Right. That's determination. Yes. And yes. you know what you have to do, what type of decision exactly. it's going to take. You got to burn the midnight oil sometime. And I was, I hate to admit this, but when I was in school, and knowing we were going to have a big test, I'd wait till the last day or two or night and study for that test when I should have been studying all along the la that week. Mm -hmm. So um, I know I just know there's nobody else out there that has done that, that took that decision. <laughs> <laughs> well, you Praise know, there's God. a scripture before you go on uh, that I, I had marked here, and, and it is so true. It's in Proverbs, the 14th chapter and the 12th verse. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. See, we yes. we have to be very careful. Every, right. um, we uh, the world will try to justify their decisions or why they believe what they believe and how you know, why they're doing what they're doing, but um, we shouldn't be go by what we uh, we think. It's but what does the what word of God says, say about you know the decision? Do we consult God first on the decision? Amen. That's it. And when you mention first, there is sometimes we get ahead and we want something so bad mm -hmm. that we go ahead and go with that decision on our own, mm -hmm. and then we'll go to God afterwards. Mm -hmm. But that's not the way it's to be. Yeah, I've seen this happen before, Sister Faye. We'll go to God afterwards when it doesn't seem like it's working and things of that nature. And well, well Lord, I'm, you know, I was, I've done my best here. What? You know, where did I go wrong? But well, where we went wrong is we didn't seek his, you know, consultation. Mm -hmm. We didn't ask his approval on the right. matter. Amen. It may be good what we're doing. That's true. But it might have been not exactly the way God wanted it to be done. Amen. That is true. And I want to tell you something that I did one time. Okay. And I needed a new car. And you've heard of putting out fleeces, and mm -hmm. some people don't believe you should do that. But, Lord, if I am to get this new car, let there be a number seven in the the uh, identifying number. What do you call that? The V-I-C or the something VIN like that. Number? The V-I-N number. And I want you to know 
I got the car. Mind you, that's the way I prayed. Lord, if I'm to get it, let there be a seven. But there was not only a seven, there were five sevens mm. in that VIN number. Wow. But do you know that that was the biggest lemon I have ever driven? <laughs> I even took a list in at one time and had 18 things wrong wow. with it. And the salesman that sold it to me, he said, well, this looks like my daughter's Christmas list. I said, this is my, this is your lemon list that I'm handing <laughs> you for this car. So see there, and my husband brought up, it's, but you asked the Lord, A7. Mm -hmm. You didn't say several sevens right but and that right. that was a decision even though i had sought god and said i need a car if i'm to get it lord and then i'll know you're approving this let there be a seven in but well, there were five and you know i i've heard people say but you know um this is really a good deal things of that nature and uh but one of my one of my favorite sayings my husband likes to say if it's a good deal and it's what God wants you to have, it'll still be there when you come back after you look around at everything else. That's true. That's <laughs> and I believe true. that. I believe that. that. Is Amen. So true. And uh, but two on the most important decision we'll ever ever make is when if we are, have been living under the power of Satan mm -hmm. and we feel a drawing from the Lord, mm -hmm. how Satan is going to fight us. Right. But we, that's where that determination comes in. Yes. Lord, I can do this. Help me. And he will. He will answer that. Every single time. But Satan is going to fight you. Because, oh, yeah. um, but coming to Christ and accepting the new and leaving the old behind. behind because when he changes us, we are dead to the old person. That's right. And yeah. we become that new person yes. in the Lord. Amen. And he loves us so much. Amen. But one of the weapons that Satan will use against mm -hmm. us, oh, you really don't believe that. You, your sins won't be forgiven. Mm -hmm. Well, if you think that way and you listen to that, then that's making the death of Jesus on the cross and his shedding the blood all in vain. Mm. But there, it was not done in vain. Hallelujah, mm, Sister that's right. Deborah. That's right. God covered every sin, even that's behind and those we even haven't oh, created. Most, I mean, uh, we've done definitely. yet. Most definitely. Every decision that we make. Uh, you know, I've been hearing a lot of people, you know, saying, you know, you asked them what... Uh, How's things going? What you doing? And they'll say, I've been battling the devil. Mm -hmm. And uh, my husband, uh, you know, I've been hearing that for the last two or three weeks. And my husband, uh, this past Sunday, preached a message, why are you battling the devil? The Lord said it is finished. Mm -hmm. He's already is defeated. Good. He's, you know, yes. it is finished. But we make hard, things hard sometimes. And the re reason that you're trying to battle them is because we're not taking our rightful authority, making the decision That's it. to take our rightful authority mm -hmm. to step up and just and just say, devil, hey, it's finished. Mm -hmm. Jesus That's took it. care of it all. Amen. And if you made a good servant Satan, he doesn't want to let you go. He that's still right. wants to feed those lies into your life. And, and that's what they are. They are mm -hmm. lies from the devil. And who, who really, he's like a tied dog. He can only go as far as God will allow that's him right. to go. But we serve a God greater. Amen. And I tell the devil lots of times, don't you get tired of losing devil where I'm concerned? <laughs> and we have that authority to talk back to him like that. We do. And that way, I am determined I have lived both sides mm -hmm. of that track. And I'm telling you here, those that can hear me, you will never, never lose with Jesus because he loved you. Satan doesn't love you. Satan does not love no. us. He's he's a falsehood. But God is so good. Always, always. Always. But it takes that determination. And I think, um, I want to read a scripture here over in uh, Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Mm -hmm. And the 14th verse, starting there through the 16th. Jesus, the great high priest, 
seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Mm -hmm. And that scripture there, Jesus, you mean Jesus was tempted in ways that mm -hmm. I'm tempted? Yes, he was, but he was sinless. Hallelujah. He committed no sin. So therefore, he knows, Sister Deborah, right. how hard it is for us sometimes when the devil comes against us and we get, we, we're not prayed up and we don't have our armor on mm -hmm. the right way. We have shined up the armor. We haven't greased our weapons that needs to be greased, in other words, Amen. to fight him. And he comes against our mind. Jesus knows all that because it says he was tempted. Think about when he was in the wilderness right. and how the devil tempted him 40 days. Wow. Jesus was without water and without mm -hmm. food. And you're physically, you're weak at that, at that point. Yes. But he still said it is it, written. It Praise is God. Written. So this is our weapon right here, the word of God. Amen. And then we have that armor to put on Amen. that covers our minds, our hearts, uh, and the breastplate of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And I'll, and God didn't make a mistake. No. When he formed us, he took us, took and many times he's had to take me back to the potter's house. Oh, yes. Because I would slip or I, I would mm -hmm. maybe say something that was unbecoming mm -hmm. a Christian, or I might have found myself giving my opinion about somebody that mm -hmm. I shouldn't have. But I have to go back and ask the Lord to forgive me. And I know many times the Lord has had to take me back to the potter's house. You know what's wonderful about it, Sister Deborah? He doesn't patch. He doesn't do patch up yeah. work. He starts over new with a right. new vessel. Amen. And that's what I t tell him. Lord, don't, no patching, no patching. I need you to create new. me into a new vessel. Amen. And he does and, it. And, and he does that every single time. We can start off new. Mm -hmm. It's just like, uh, I remember my mom. She would. Uh, she didn't buy patterns. Oh, your she mother would say, was a there wonderful was, woman. There was a dress I saw one time. I believe it was in J.C. Penney's, and uh, and I really liked that. Of course, you know, uh, it was very expensive at that time, and um, and she knew that I liked it. And I, I know it bothered her. She couldn't, you know, afford to pay for it. Well, the next thing I know, she's got all these newspapers and stuff and like tape me, and she make, creates a pattern mm -hmm. and makes me a dress. And you, it was almost identical. You couldn't hardly tell mm -hmm. the difference. And that's the way the Lord does. He creates us new. We think uh, that, you know, sometimes uh, we'll just say a little quick prayer here or, oh, this will be okay. I'll get uh, forgiveness later and everything. But, you know, what if God called you home? In the, middle, in the middle of that before you had a chance. Before that could get under the blood. Amen. Mm -hmm. Everything, uh, we need to be, uh, ask God to place, we need to place everything under the blood every single day. Every you know, when you, day. When, when you start in the morning, when you end at night, praise God, just ask God to, you know, create new and put everything under the blood and ask him to forgive us. Amen. Amen. And I also add in there too, Lord, if there's something I'm not aware of, please forgive me for that. Right, Bring right. it to mind. But if there's anything I have not, and I should be confessing it and asking forgiveness, please, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> because there may be things in our life that we don't really realize that we have done or that that is a sin. Right. But God knows, and he'll stir your heart. He'll begin to... Well, you know, sometimes uh, uh, there's things that... Uh, how do I uh, say this? There's things to me that uh, I'm convicted of. It might, might not necessarily it's wrong in the Word of God, uh, but it's, it's uh, I'm convicted of it. You may not be convic convicted of it and everything, but, and uh, God doesn't say it's wrong, but it's just you know my own personal conviction. Mm -hmm. If I still went ahead feeling that conviction, then it would be sin to me, mm -hmm. and I would have to place it under the blood. That's where the decision-making comes mm -hmm. in. Well, I know I heard of a lady that one time uh, there was something going on in, in somebody's family, and she was the maid, and she had said... Uh, well, I just, I tell you what she said, I would just jumped in there and I would have slugged her <laughs> oh my goodness. and said, and then I'd repent later. 
And that's what she said. Uh, see, that's, well, that's, that's, that's wrong to feel that right. way. Uh, I, I think that sometimes uh, that's kind of the mentality that uh, some have is that, you know, I can always repent later. Mm -hmm. I can always do this later. But as a child of God, we need to ask ourselves before before we make the decision, consult the Lord. And uh, that saying went around for years, what would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. And if we really thought about what Jesus would do, we would make a whole different decision, wouldn't we? <laughs> we surely would. And we don't know that we would have time right. to repent over that. And that's what, and, uh, but God is so good. Yes. And then in the, uh, let's go to the 16th verse, said, let us therefore come boldly, not half-heartedly in that, but said boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find mm -hmm. grace to help in the time of need. Amen. Always on time. Amen. Now, the Lord may not come as fast as we think, but He always comes on time. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Exactly. Well, Lazarus, you oh, know. Oh, yes. You know, uh, his sister said, Lord, if you'd been here before, earlier. Before. You know, earlier. she was claiming. But uh, God was about to show them something miraculous. Uh, yes. He is an on time God. Yes. You know, it said He wept as well. The Lord he wept. wept. I mean, that was His friend. Mm -hmm. But He knew what. The Father had sent him to do, he, and he was about to proclaim something, show people something that he is an on-time God. Mm -hmm. It may not be the time we want because so we see things so differently sometimes, as yes. long as we're in this fleshly body. You know, I've, I've been trying to ask the Lord of lately that, uh, Lord, you know, let me see through the supernatural eyes. Don't let me be moved by my emotions, you know, my carnal thinking. Let me be moved supernaturally what your word says yes yes and he he hears those prayers too and uh sometimes he'll bring something to your mind and well lord i i don't uh have you ever said you probably haven't but i'm not ready to repent lord over that mm -hmm. well we shouldn't say that mm -hmm. because how do we know that we something may happen mm -hmm. and our life is over and Amen. before 30 minutes. We don't Amen. know that. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And I thought about on making decisions. I studied a little bit on Esther. Mm -hmm. She had one of the greatest decisions to make. Oh. But she had to determine, and as that uh, it's Webster said, firmness of mind and determination she put her life on the line when she revealed what Haman was going to do to Mordecai to yes. have him killed. And, but she said, well, if I perish, I perish. Mm -hmm. She put her, line, her life on the line for her uncle mm -hmm. and for the Jews, too, that they would be spared. And the king, when you went into his audience, you had to go to... Uh, his room outside there and stand. And if you ask for audience, it could mean your death. Mm -hmm. But he had a golden sepulcher. And if he pointed it at you like that, then you could come in and he spared your life. Mm -hmm. And so she had to go through that too. So he spared her and put the sepulcher where she could come in. Mm. Then she revealed, and of course the tables were turned on Haman. But it was Esther's determination, yes. putting her life on the line. She had to make a decision to save her people. Right. And she did not fail. And, you know, and there are times as well that we have to make a decision quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's where I turn to the Word of God, when I have to make a decision quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, I get in my prayer closet and I pray and, and ask God's confirmation over things because if we make decisions hastily, uh, oftentimes we make the wrong decision True. because of pressure and different things. She could have very easily done that, made yes. a decision hastily and mm -hmm. made the wrong decision. But by the grace of God, she didn't. Praise God. And see, she had hid the fact that she was Jewish herself. Mm -hmm. And Haman had sent out a decree behind the king's back that all, all Jews in the provinces were to be killed, mm -hmm. men, women, old, and young, and children. 
even babies. But it didn't come about because of Amen. Esther's determination. She had to make a decision. Right. And she made it through the strength. God gave her strength to do mm -hmm. that. But when she said, if I perish, then I perish. perish. And hallelujah. And she, she was the queen. Mm -hmm. And the king loved her so much, too. And uh, so then the Jews were given all rights in their provinces and that, and then all over where their feet would touch, really. Don't you just love how God orchestrates things? You know, the king, the king fell in love with her and, and all those things. Um, he, uh, we might not be aware of uh, things being orchestrated by the right. hand of God, but uh, he, he knows what he's doing. Yes. He, you know, he's in control. If we just allow him to move the way he needs to move, we, we tighten the rings sometimes. And, and then we ask God, why aren't you moving? But it's something by what we've done or what we've said. That's it's true. not nothing, anything the Lord done. Mm -hmm. But uh, I love how he orchestrates things and uh, makes a beautiful story mm -hmm. out of it. Put it that way. Isn't it awesome? That's true. Now, the other story, of course, is opposite of that. Mm -hmm. And that uh, was Namath, was it? I just went blind. Name. That no. dipped and was to go. Naaman. Naaman. He was to go to the Jordan to be healed of leprosy. Mm -hmm. And he was to dip seven times. Mm -hmm. Well, that didn't sit good with him. The Jordan <laughs> no. was dirty and, you know, different parts of it. And there was a river there close by. Why do I have to do that? He did not like what the prophet had sent for him to do in mm -hmm. order to be healed. It didn't sit right with him. And there are some sometimes when your pastor and that has to tell you something or even correct you mm -hmm. for something, and it may not sit well with you, but take it to the Lord because yes, yes. that's who God has put there for you. But yes. Naaman... He was not happy with that. So then when he decided to do as the prophet had said, then he was went to the dirty Jordan mm -hmm. and dipped seven times, and he was healed of the leprosy. Amen. But he had to make that decision, didn't he? Right. He and had to get himself out of the way exactly. and be determined if to follow. If he had done the opposite, he would have never been healed. That's true. I, uh, I believe that the majority of the uh, requests of the things that Lord he tells us to do, he's checking our obedience to see if we will do it. He's, uh, or if sometimes, uh, well, Lord, that's a little bit too hard. You know, you want me to do that? And uh, I, I remember a scripture in the Word of God where it says, confess your faults one to another one to so another. that you may be healed. I think we often forget about that scripture sometimes. You know, we come up, come up you know, for a, you know, a prophet or someone to uh, lay hands on us to be, to be healed. But we forget about confessing our faults to faults. one another, mm -hmm. and, and that's the decision you have to make You're to right. do it. To do what the right. word of God says. Amen. Yes, and I would say, Lord, put the right one right there. That it's just going to be between me, them, and you. Mm -hmm. You know, and that that's that's important too. Amen. But uh, but it's it's amazing. But then I thought, too, another uh, is the prodigal son. Amen. I was a prodigal daughter for about eight to ten years. I still would pray to, to the Lord when I got in hard places. And then I would say, Lord, I am going to answer my call when I'm, I'm through you know, what I was doing was serving mm -hmm. Satan. Mm -hmm. You know, I was going here and there places I shouldn't. But then I'd go to church. I was one of these. It could be during the week, but never on Sunday because <laughs> I'd go to church. I'd right. take the kids and me would go to church. Never on Sunday. Right. But it doesn't work that way. Uh, no, no. A God Christian. doesn't work just on a certain day. That's right. <laughs> no, open hours, open, open nine to five. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, I just had to finally be determined. Yes. And when I saw the Lord, he let me go through a time when I felt like he was withdrawing mm -hmm. his spirit. And I never want to be in that oh, place again for it's a terrible week. terrible feeling. Week, it was like I, I was alive, but yet I was dead. I had mm -hmm. no feelings. Mm -hmm. I couldn't cry. I couldn't pray. 
the tears would not come. But then I said, God, please don't leave me. Give me another chance. And he did, or Amen. I wouldn't be here today. Praise God. But he's a wonderful God. I believe and we all have our own love story with the Lord mm -hmm. about how he comes in and just sweeps us away from that sinful life when we turn to him, when we look up to him. I, I uh, often, that's, and that's the way I see it. Right. Because when you used up all your resources, like the woman with the issue of blood, and uh, you've done everything in your power, and you, you just come to the point where you just give up, that's when the Lord comes in and just sweeps you off your feet. Oh, He does. And restores you back to where he does. you need to be. Amen. And He puts those sins in the sea of forgetfulness. Yes. He never brings them forward again. But, you know, I, I like to go fishing, but I <laughs> hardly ever go. But I expect them fish to bite when I go because I don't <laughs> yeah. go off. And I want to I want to reel a big fish in. Right. You, and, uh, but God is so good. But we're the ones that takes our rods back into the Cast sea of forgetfulness out. and reel it back. And we should not do that because mm -hmm. those sins, we won't catch anything mm -hmm. because they're mm -hmm. gone. They're gone. Well, you know, when you ask for forgiveness in the... In the Lord delivers you, and uh, maybe somewhere down along the line in the future, the temptation starts returning. The enemy will place a thought in your mind, see, I told you you wouldn't deliver from yeah. that. Mm -hmm. It was just a matter of time that you couldn't, you know, withhold uh, all, all those feelings that you're feeling. But, you know, that's where we've got to rise up, and you're a liar, right. Satan. You're the right. father of all lies. Right. And take our authority and make that decision. And I remind him, too, Satan, you're under my feet. Yes. You're yes. under my feet. Amen. And, uh, but God is so good. But when we make that determination, we need to first go to God. When we have to make Amen. that decision, take it to God first, and then things will Amen. fall right in place Amen. and the peace will come. Amen. This has been good, Sister Faye. If you've got a decision, if you're at a crossroads today, Turn first to the Lord. We encourage you today. Send us your prayer requests, whatever your need may be. Walk in victory, walk in joy and peace. And until next time, I want you to walk in love and keep your faith. God bless you, and we hope to see you soon back on our next program. Bye for now. Encounters is sponsored by Vessels of Honor Worldwide, AAA Enterprises, and the viewers. If you would like to contact Encounters, email encounterswithgod at comcast.net or write to us at 117 Sunset Place, Portland, Tennessee, 37148.